On this episode... I want it made in the USA. Just how hard is it to mass produce a high quality bobblehead at an affordable price in the good old USA? And then... Oh. Ah. Oh. Pretty hard, actually. Can you make me look smarter? <laughs> It's come to my attention that many of our elected officials and even some of our founding fathers have disturbing ties to China. What's up with that? I'm sure he was from Boston with a capital J. I was told Georgia. Huh, I had no idea. All right, so maybe it's not a scandal. Maybe the undeniable fact that bobblehead versions of American presidents are now being mass-produced only in China has no real impact on the macroeconomic forces shaping our larger relationship with American manufacturing. Personally, I'm more concerned with microeconomic issues, which is why I'm in this production van hurtling toward the next story. When a fan suggested I raise money for my foundation by mass-producing a bobblehead version of myself, I said okay. But with a few conditions. I wanted the best possible quality, the lowest possible price, and one more thing. If I'm going to do a bobblehead, I want it made in the USA. It just seemed a reasonable thing to ask, but everywhere I turned, can't make a bobblehead in the USA. The company reached out called Royal Bobble here in Alpharetta, Georgia, to say, look, we can't, we can't do it on a mass scale, but we'll make you 100 for your foundation. And bobblehead's a remarkable thing. I really don't know all the history of it, but it, uh, it really has become a cultural, uh, you know, like a thing, right? Created in 1932 by John Bobble. Is that true? No. But every time I think you're right on the verge of saying something useful and honest. Uh -huh. If it all goes as planned, I'm gonna have 100 limited made in the USA bobbleheads of me. Maybe if this country can make a bobblehead of me, maybe there's hope. You feel hopeful? Look at the size of this head, man. Look at it. Good, good size head. For the last six months, I've scoured the country looking for an American company that can mass produce thousands of bobbleheads in my image right here in the good old USA. We're here. From what I'm told, it's no longer possible. However, I did find a bobble mogul in Georgia who wants to help me out. Mike, how are hey. you doing? It's good to see you. Warren, it's good to see you. It's <laughs> Warren, you. right? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for coming out. He also wants to explain why the entire bobblehead business has gone to China. <laughs> That's a big bobble. It is. We go to trade shows and it's, there's nothing like a, a big bobblehead to let people know what you do. <laughs> I love it. Bobblehead dolls have been around a lot longer than you think. We estimate this to be about 140 years old. Paper mache. You can see it's got a different type of mechanism. It's more of a pivot, and as paint's peeling off, I'm sure it's loaded with lead paint. Of course, and it made of pure, healthy asbestos. Warren's been in the bobblehead biz for less than 10 years, but these types of figurines date all the way back to the 1600s, in, of all places, China. Nowadays, some bobbleheads can be cheap plastic tchotchkes or highly collectible reproductions of pop culture figures. This set of original Beetle bobbleheads from 1964 will set you back at least 10 grand. It's nothing to shake your head at. But this is a business that Warren, who spent 20 years in the mortgage industry, knew nothing about. This company, how did it come into existence? Now? Well, that was a victim of the dot-com bubble, and I was buying and selling some domain names. And so one day, um, there was an auction, a domain auction, and the name bobbleheads.com was up at auction. And I said, that's cool. <laughs> I think I'll bid. So I was kind of surprised that I won it. So you essentially like wrote a headline and right. then made up the story. And this was during the 2008 election with you know Obama and John McCain and all that. So all of a sudden, overnight, from on, literally on day one, I had an order. And, uh, and it kind of grew from there. Warren did know a thing or two about e-commerce, though, and was able to reinvent himself in this quirky trade. Which leads to the real reason I'm here. Why is it so hard to mass produce a high-quality bobblehead at a competitive price in the United States of America? To find out, you actually have to make one. So this is Tom. Hey, Tom. He's our digital sculptor. How are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise. From the beginning of bobbleheads, they've been developed in kind of the old way using clay. Yeah. When the clay is ready, you make the mold and you pour the cast and you do the paint. Right. They really achieved popularity back in the 60s when you had like the Mickey Mantle and some of the sports figures. 
was Mickey Mantle one of the early Mickey ones? Mantle, Ali May, some of those layers became really popular back in the 60s, and yeah. that's kind of when it all took off. Of course, they all had the same body, they just had a slightly different head. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we go to great lengths to make sure that the body is extremely customized to match the person. For better or worse? For better or for worse. That's a, that's a bag. Right, I understand, yeah. <laughs> so that's a reasonable amount in the bag, and there'll be a dog at my feet. Not just any dog. <laughs> that's my dog, that's Freddy. That's great. That's a very charitable sculpture. I haven't looked at that lean in a, in a while. Mike, we've also learned another important part of designing bobbleheads is that you have to accentuate the positive. Well, of course. Can you make me look smarter? <laughs> <laughs> now that the design is set, time to make the mini-me. Rachel? Yes, sir. Mike? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So this came off a 3D printer. It comes directly from the file that he sent. When I get that, I start making the molds for him. And so we just stick them down in there. So as soon as that sets up, we can take him back into the warehouse and pour the silicone in it. And this is the form for our mold. Would you like an apron? Would it look like that? Yes, it will. Yeah, it would. The steps to making a mold are pretty straightforward. What am I stirring again? Um, it's silicone rubber. There's stuff down in the bottom mm -hmm. that you're scraping off. Oops. You don't want to stir too hard. I was enthusiastically trying to mix it up real well. First, you need to mix together a couple silicone agents, but you need to do it fast. For this, you have nine minutes until it starts to gel, and then you can't work with it anymore. You have to get it right the first time. I had no idea such a level of pressure existed down <laughs> here at the bobblehead factory. We're in 10. <laughs> Once you've got that perfect mix, you pour it over the 3D casting we just made. So when you pour it into the mold, you want to hold it up high. Mm -hmm. You want to have a real thin stream coming down. Right? Hit Be me right on the head? No, because if you knock it off, you'll ruin your mold. Ruined. So you want to hit one of the sides. Mm -hmm. Just too high? Like no, so. you actually want to go a little higher if you can. It looks good. So you're basically making kind of a negative, right? That's exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our pressure pot. You just stick it down in there. Okay. And this is going to get all the air bubbles out. And if you don't get them on tight enough, it will explode. So you got to oh. be careful. All right, let's get that extra spin then. We're all ready. You do that. And it's going to sit for 30 minutes. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Watch out for the bean. Got it. <laughs> 30 minutes later, the rubber has hardened. Now I need to pull out the printed cast head. Oh yeah, it's hard. At this point, we would cut it open, use razor blade. Which is easier said than done. And you just cut down the side. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like so? Uh-huh. This is the best way to do this? That's the way I do it. Are your fingers still attached? Sometimes. Am I being a sissy about this, or is this just not cutting through here? Do you want me to do it? No. Okay. So I'm here in Alpharetta, Georgia, trying to mass produce a high quality bobblehead I can sell to raise some money for the MicroWorks Scholarship Fund. Ah, oh. And I'm failing. Can you just cut down the side? Come on, I think I'm messing up. I'm pretty sure this is gonna slip off and I'm gonna pull out my liver. Look at that, why, why wouldn't it go through there? Sure, go ahead. No, 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 you didn't just do that. <laughs> and then you just pulled out. Why didn't that do that for me? I don't know. We're going to have to do the whole thing again from the start. I can't live with that. <laughs> I, and I'm trying to be careful not to cut the back of this. Yes, you want to try not to cut your 3D part because every other thing that you'll mold from that will have that same right. cut in it. Like it, if I feel something hard there, that's probably the, the You want to start part. up here at the neck, see where it Oh, kind of I see, right. And it is easier if you have two people. As it turns out, we do have two people. If you count me as a people, I do not want to cut your thumb off. I would prefer that too. And so at that point, you're going to pull your mold apart. Yeah. And that's perfect. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah? Uh-huh. All right. It's ready to have the resin poured. OK, so these, you want to make sure that they're all mixed up just like the other. And you want to go ahead and put your gloves on. This is the resin part. This you get this on your part. stuff, it stays with you. Because you're filling in the space instead of creating a space around it. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay. <laughs> and then it's gonna go in the pressure pot. 
back in the pressure pot. There you go. And now, after a mere four minutes, and then, ow. <laughs> and the threat of yet another concussion. He's perfect. Voila. That's fresh out of the mold, and you can see little defects like this and like underneath his chin. Yeah. Those will have to be cleaned up before we can prime him. It's and me, then, it's not him. Right. It's me, I'm standing him. right here. <laughs> and then we'll do things like cut off the neck and drill out the hole in the head put in the spring, paint him, mm -hmm. and then he'll be ready to be attached to the body. I'll be ready to be attached to the body. <laughs> and now comes the most critical phase, making me look good. When the real time comes into play is painting the details, the eyes, That's the little the sparkle thing. in the eye and the color in the eye. It takes a lot of time to do that. This that I'm doing right now, it's just trying to make the hat look a little bit older. Distress. You don't wear nice, clean hats. I don't wear nice, clean anything, really. <laughs> They do appear to sparkle a little bit. They're a little red this morning, but <laughs> um, just a little bit of white in there. Just a little bit of white. That's all yeah. it is. I use toothpick. It's my secret weapon. <laughs> You're going to put a toothpick in my eye? Yep. Had you ever uh, personally owned a bobblehead? Um, I actually have one of me and my husband. It was for our wedding as a gift. From here? Yes. Okay. From here. That's my father-in-law. Warren's your father-in-law? Yes. <laughs> you buried the lead. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. Warren. We do have a copy of that bobblehead. This is Rachel and my son, Brandon. And this is the picture we worked from. Ah. There are perks to be in the bobblehead business. No kidding. It's all mm -hmm. about who you know. Watching Rachel, I realize just how much work is involved with creating a mini-me. Surely, there must be a shortcut. When it comes to reproducing them, does each one have to be individually hand? Everyone is individually hand done. Oh. Right. Now, is that just in my case, or is it like with it's the in every, it's, it's in every case. If you're doing 10,000 pieces, they're all you hand gotta, painted. You got to hand paint 10,000 pieces. Oh. I do a mold and cast here, and I paint them, and I make a duplicate, and then we send one copy to China for them to copy what I've painted. By hand over there. Yes. Right. What's the difference in the cost between the best possible bobblehead you can buy that's made in China mm -hmm. and the best possible bobblehead you can buy? that's made here. The retail price of a product like that would probably have to be about $200 yeah. per unit. And about $20 if we do the hand production in China. And the only part that we do in China is the molding and the casting and the, and the right. actual hand painting. That's fascinating. So it's a question of where's the hand painting being done? Right. Yeah. You've agreed to do 100 of these? Uh, Rachel will do 100 of these. Does that mean you're going to paint uh, my face 100 times? <laughs> yes, it does. That, that is so sweet. <laughs> See, I have, I have like editors back in Hollywood who hate me because <laughs> all day long they have to sit there looking at me. You're, you're going to hate me. Uh, so really then, no two of these are going to be identical. They're not going to be identical, but we're going to try and get them as close They're going to be really close. I want to watch you do one. OK. Do you want to see? <laughs> yeah, I think I better sit down. I can't do it here. I can't mass produce bobbleheads the way I want them mm -hmm. to. It's hard math. I mean, if we spend five to 10 hours per bobblehead, and if the average labor rate is $20, let's say, $100 to $200. And you're worth every penny, Rachel. <laughs> well, thank you. So, in order to mass produce a high quality version of my giant noggin here in the USA, Rachel would have to mass produce herself. When it comes to quality, there really is no shortcut. And since there's no mass market for a $200 likeness of yours truly, I'll just auction off the hundred Rachel has agreed to make and use the money to award scholarships to train kids for American jobs. Along the way, I will ponder the possibility that America's willingness to ship the entire bobblehead industry overseas might be reflective of a larger willingness to outsource all sorts of other things. Hey, I'm no expert, but my little microeconomist friend here appears to be nodding yes. And really, who am I to argue?